Johnson is the name of the Father and the Son. As Proverbs 13 verse 4 says, What is his name? What is his Son's name? If thou canst tell, because to know the name of the Son is to know the name of the Father, and to know the name of the Father is to know the name of the Son. So Jesus is not only the name of the Son, Jesus is also the name of the Father. Jesus is also the name of the Holy Spirit. John 14 and 26. The Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send, says the Son, in my name. In Acts 16 and verse 7, in the revised version, or a good margin, you will read of the Spirit of Jesus. In Philippians 1, verse 19, you'll read plainly in the King James Version of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus is the name of the Father, Jesus is the name of the Son, and Jesus is the name of the Holy Ghost. That's one thing which we would like to stress. When we contend for the supreme deity of Jesus, we contend for Jesus, a name which is common to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost according to the Word of God. But let's take this matter a step forward. Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God, not only bore the name of the Father, but the Bible teaches he was the Father. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And his name, the name of the child, the name of the son, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. Notice the definite article. The Mighty God. Here it comes. The Everlasting Father. Or as the Hebrew says, the Father of Eternity. Thus, in language clear beyond misunderstanding and ambiguity, the Bible declares that that person who was the child, that person who was the son, was also the mighty God and the Father of Eternity. This great truth is repeated in John chapter 14 and verse 9. Philip wanted to see the Father. Jesus gently reproves him and says, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Hear it? He that hath seen me, says the Son, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. What could be clearer? What could be plainer? John 10 and 30 in the Revised Version. Jesus the Son says, I and my Father are one. Not two, but one. Of course, no doubt we'll be treated to a quibble that Jesus and the Father are one as a husband and wife are one. I warn my opponent against such, against using such, for this reason. Jesus, the Jesus who said, I and my Father are one, made it clear that this ineffable oneness was such that if anyone saw him, they saw the Father. He says, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Would my dear friend, Mr. Toffee, be prepared to stand before this congregation and say, He that hath seen me hath seen my wife? It won't work. When Jesus said, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, he meant what he said, he said what he meant. When Jesus said, I am the Father, are one, he meant it to be certainly an indivisible oneness. In the second epistle of John, verse 9, I read, He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ hath both the Father and the Son. In Colossians 2 and 9, in him, Jesus dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Or as Colossians 1.19 puts it, it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Or, paraphrasing it, it was pleasant for the Father 
to indwell him in full. The great key to an understanding of Jesus is this. He is the Father, as the Bible plainly says. He is also the Son, as it equally clearly teaches. When we say he's the Father, we mean he's God. When we say he's the Son, we mean he is man. He is the Father as to his deity, and he is the Son as to his humanity. When he is portrayed as the Father, the thought of absolute deity is involved in when he is portrayed as the Son, the thought of absolute humanity is involved. I warn you tonight, there is no other way to make Jesus God other than to make him the Father. Because as the Bible plainly declares to us, there is one God the Father. 1 Corinthians 8 and 6. To us there is one God the Father. One God and Father of all. Deny the fatherhood of Jesus as you have denied his deity. He is God because he is the Father. And so we say Jesus of Nazareth, who is called the Son of God, not only bore the name of his Father, he was the Father. Likewise, Jesus of Nazareth, who is called the Son of God, is one person with the Holy Ghost. Listen to this. Ephesians 4 verse 4 tells us plainly, there is one spirit, one spirit, not two or more, but there is one spirit. 1 Corinthians 8 and 6 says there is one Lord, Jesus Christ. One Lord, Jesus Christ, not two Lord, one Lord. So there is one spirit and there is one Lord, Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is that Spirit. What could be clearer? What could be plainer? There is one Spirit. There is one Lord, Jesus Christ. Now the Lord is that Spirit. So Jesus of Nazareth is one being or one person with the Holy Ghost. Again, we remind you that in Acts 16 and 3, the Divine Version, the Holy Ghost is called the Spirit of Jesus. Philippians 1.19, the Holy Ghost is called the Spirit of Jesus Christ. In John 20 and 22, watch it. Jesus breathed upon his disciples and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Do we propose to make a difference of person between a man and his breath? He breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. In John 14, 18, Jesus looks at the apostles and he says, I will not leave you orphans. Read your margin. That's the word. Jesus says to the apostles, I will not leave you orphans. In other words, he was their father. He said, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Here we have Jesus promising to come as the Holy Ghost in order to be a father to his apostles. John 14, verse 16, this truth is also beautifully brought out. John 14 and verse 16. Jesus says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Jesus was consoling the hearts of the apostles. He says, I pray the Father, he'll give you another comforter, and the comforter will abide with you forever. Who is it that abides with the Christian? Jesus, of course. Matthew 28 and verse 20. Jesus says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. So Jesus of Nazareth is one person with the Holy Ghost. Now, this is what we're coming to. Because Jesus is, and is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, because of that, Jesus could say in Revelation 1 and verse 8, I am the Almighty. Not we are the Almighty. But Jesus could say, I am the Almighty. Reverently speaking, it seems like the Savior agrees with our proposition. My proposition tonight is Jesus is the supreme deity. 
Jesus said, I am the Almighty. I heard a preacher one time telling a congregation, he said, the devil is almighty. Then when he saw the look of consternation in the people's face, he said, but the Lord is mightier than he. I don't need to point out to this intelligent audience that there's nobody mightier than the almighty. And Jesus said, I am, personal pronoun, singular number. Jesus said, I am the Almighty. Why? Because the Bible reveals he is the Father. He is the Son. 